6 o'clock and declare that we have a quorum present. If you will please stand for our invitation, which will be led by Mr. Joe Reinhardt. And then our pledges of allegiance will be led by Lake Jackson Intermediate student Maya Hunt and Olivia Stringer. Mr. Reinhardt. Please bow with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to us together to serve the, our community, our students, our families, our stakeholders. It's a blessing to have this opportunity in the free world. We need to remember that, uh, that each day as we take our steps. Bless the group that's assembled here to make decisions that are just for everyone involved. Bless each family that's represented here as they travel home. All this we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join us for the Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. our board begin making its way to the front as we transition into our awards, achievements, and recognition. Time, I will now turn the presentation over to Ms. Carly Christmas. Good evening, Superintendent Massey, Board President Howard, board members, staff, and guests. Tonight, we begin our recognition honoring a group of volunteers that give countless hours to the students and staff in our district. The state of Texas designates school board recognition months every January. At this time, BISD would like to express our appreciation for this very special group of volunteers. In Bradsport Independent School District, we are grateful for the service of these fine community leaders, and in honor of this occasion, Superintendent Danny Massey has declared in proclamation, whereas the Bradsport Independent School District is setting the standard for educational excellence with a mission to graduate each student to be future ready and... Whereas in Bradsport Independent School District, we believe every child deserves the highest quality education. We believe everyone is accountable for student success. We believe students find purpose through connections with their schools. We believe collaborative partnerships are vital to strengthening the learning experience. We value and support the contributions of our staff. And whereas the Bradsport Board of Trustees work closely with parents, educational professionals, and other community members to ensure that the ISD will provide a rigorous and relevant learning experience to ensure that every student will be future ready. The ISD's learning environments will be safe and conducive to learning. The ISD will promote, communicate, and market the accomplishments, achievements, and successes of students and staff. The ISD will exercise fiscal responsibility to ensure financial strength and provide the resources to equip and maintain quality facilities and educational programming. The ISD will recruit, develop, and retain highly effective staff and, whereas the Brazosport Board of Trustees works tirelessly to lead our staff to launch the next generation of leaders, where from here anything is truly possible. And whereas the Brazosport Board of Trustees, along with advocates for public education, and are responsible for communicating the needs of the BISD to our community and the public's expectations to the district, now, therefore, I, Superintendent Danny Massey, do hereby declare my appreciation for the members of the Bradsport Independent School Board of Trustees and proclaim the month of January 2020 as School Board Recognition Month in Bradsport. I urge all BISD students, parents, staff, and community members to join me in recognizing the dedication and hard work of our Board of Trustees. In official rec recognition whereof, I hereby affix my signature this 13th day of January 2020 and so signed by Superintendent Danny Massey, Superintendent of the ISD Schools. In, in BISD, our school board members tackle difficult decisions. They shoulder enormous responsibility. This team is elected individually, but they work in concert with one another to establish the policies and provide the frameworks for our schools. They provide vision, leadership, and in their roles as advocates, they stand up for public education and guard against anything that takes away from our children or undermines our schools. Thank you to the BISD Board of Trustees for advocating for all school children in the Bradsport community and beyond. Thank you, President Mason Howard, Board Vice President Scott Schwartner, Board Secretary Jerry Adkins, 
Board Assistant Secretary Joe Reinhardt, Board Member Patty Says, Board Member Liz Quayer, and Board Member Chris Dunn. We are truly grateful to BISD for your service. Thank you. Thank you.
BIT setting the standard in educational excellence across the state and the nation. Time in accordance with BED locals, the board will provide an audience for the individuals who have signed up prior to the meeting to address the board. Tonight we do not have any, so we will move on to our next, uh, to our next item. Uh, our consent agenda is our next item uh, on the list. Are there any items requested to be pulled from the consent agenda this evening? I move for approval. Alright, it's been moved by Mr. Reinhardt. Do I have a second? Second, uh, <coughs> by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And all opposed by nay. All right, that carries unanimously. Uh, next item that we have are our action items. Action item A is the maximum class size exemption for Austin STEM Academy. Mr. Ron Redden. Good evening. In accordance with board policy EEB local, and in alignment with district goal, BISD campuses will be safe and conducive to learning. I'm requesting that the Board of Trustees approve class size exceptions for two first grade classrooms at the Stephen F. Austin STEM Academy. The district seeks to maintain a 22 to 1 student to teacher ratio in grades K through 4. Prior to the approval of the local innovation plan in May of 2017, the district was required to submit maximum class size exception waivers at various times throughout the school year when class sizes exceeded the 22 to 1 ratio. With fluctuations in classroom enrollment counts common to our elementary schools, classes would be approved for a state waiver and then go back to or under the 22 to 1 ratio. By passing the local innovation plan, the board eliminated the need to seek a state waiver and also provided themselves with the local control over class sizes. The local innovation plan provision for class size exceptions <coughs> provides the district with the flexibility to monitor class sizes for a longer period of time before an exception is needed and reduces the ceiling for class sizes from 25 to 1 to 24 to 1. Should a class size exceed 22 to 1 for more than 35 days, the Board of Trustees must approve an exception for the class to remain above 22 to 1. Stephen F. Austin STEM Academy has two classes in the first grade that exceed 22 to 1 student to teacher ratio. Options available to the campus to address this include seeking a class size exception from the Board of Trustees, which takes into consideration that the current 24 to 1 and 23 to 1 class sizes could fall below those ratios before the end of the school year. They can transfer new enrollees to another, they can transfer new enrollees to another campus, which would require implementing a last-in, first-out policy. While this would reduce the class sizes back to 22 to 1, it would also disrupt students who have already built relationships with their teachers and classmates and could affect the siblings of those students who would likely move with the child so that families could stay together. Another option includes transferring a student enrolled by transfer back to his or her home campus or to another campus in the district which would require moving five intra-district transfer students and one intra-district transfer student, all of whom who have been at Stephen F. Austin since the school year started. The board could also choose to hire a paraprofessional in accordance with district staffing ratios. This was done last year, and the, Steve and the Austin STEM Academy was permitted to keep the paraprofessional this year. That para has been assigned to support the two first grade classes. Finally, the board could choose to hire a teacher in accordance with district staffing ratios, which creates three challenges. First, the campus does not have a classroom available. Second, currently there is not a teacher available on the GHOST campus to add to the grade level, which means that a position would have to be posted and a highly effective teacher found after the start of the second semester. And third, the teacher to student ratios could fall below 22 to 1 in both classrooms before the end of the school year. Because the Stephen F. Austin STEM Academy is such a small campus, and since there are only two classes in each grade level, K-6, through six, class sizes at the campus are subject to fluctuations. Last year, five classes were over 22 to 1 in grades K through 4. As mentioned previously, a paraprofessional was added to the campus to support the five classes above 22 to 1, and that, 
and that para has already been assigned to support both first grade classes. At this time, one Austin STEM Academy first grade class <coughs> is at 24 to 1, and the other is at 23 to 1. And they've been over for six weeks and five weeks, respectively. Students in those classes took the middle of the year curriculum-based assessments, or CBAs, in math and reading. So we can look at the academic impact being, um, <coughs> being, above, being above the 22 to 1 threshold has had on the students. And as you can see by this table, SFA first grade students outperform the district average on approaches, meets, and masters for both math and reading, scoring a 96% approaches in math, which was the third highest score in the district, and a perfect 100% approaches in reading, which led the district. Given the fact that the Austin STEM Academy was, Academy was permitted to keep the paraprofessional who was added to the campus last year to support classes that were over 22 to 1, and that the para is currently <coughs> supporting two first grade classes needing the exception, it is the administration's recommendation that the Board of Trustees approve class size exceptions for the Stephen F. Austin STEM Academy first grade classrooms. At this time, I'd be happy to answer any clarifying questions you may have. Any questions? So moved. To approve. Second. I have, I have one before we, before we take the vote. I'm just asking. Um, with the increasing number of kids who have additional needs that we're making accommodations for, how, the, is there any concern that, that, do we know how many are in this in this group? I mean, with all the in, increased amount of kids who have either dyslexia or who have um, autism or just some of the other uh, special special needs, is it, is it a big factor in this in this grade? Two classrooms, I a lot of kids, yeah. one teacher, a paraprofessional. I'm just. I, I don't know the answer I to that, but I think okay. I can. We have the wraparound services not only from our special ed uh, personnel, but also from our fabulous interventionists. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, I feel like that there's ample, they're being served in a very appropriate way. So uh, there, yes. Okay. There, there's some behavioral issues, okay. but we're, we're getting that one under control as well. And we have the support of our behavior specialist too. And so anytime there is a critical need, it's like we have the services to provide that. Okay. Very amply so. Uh, I'm just curious. I, I, just, I know that keeps coming up every year, that those, those numbers keep growing. I just and, and not only at Stephen House, but also in, in all of our schools. Oh, yeah, that, so, that's really what I meant. Right. So we're, sometimes we stretch a little thin, but somehow we make it work with all the personnel. If, if that means time sharing across the district and helping each other, even though we may not be assigned to that school, we're, we're going to provide the services because we have to. Okay. So are the, are the teachers serving these two? Uh, are they okay with this? Uh, they, they feel positive? about handling the extra thing? I can address that. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm <laughs> well, I know, because we were part of a conversation yep. by phone with the principal. Well, and, and I visit that campus weekly, so uh, they were very gracious and said, you know, if there's some other critical needs in other classes, we'll be happy to give up our para. We, we really got this. One or two kids is not going to make or break us, but we insisted because, you know, we don't want to shortchange them because they're 22 to 1. But they're they're uh, highly qualified, extremely, as you can see from the data, uh, very talented teachers. And so uh, I've, I've happened to know one of them for at least over 20 years. And so it wouldn't matter if I packed 30 in one of their classes, they're going to be able to handle it. I had the utmost confidence in those two first grade teachers. Okay. All right, we have a recommendation that's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Right. All opposed by nay. All right. Thank Here's you. Thank you, Mr. Redden. The uh, next item we have uh, are our reports. Um, uh, report A, student literacy performance on the middle of the year screen assessments. Mr. Martell. Good evening. In accordance with EH Local and BISD goal number one in which Brussels Port ISD will provide a rigorous and relevant learning experience that every student will be future ready 
It is my pleasure to present BSD's middle of the year student literacy performance data for our kindergarten through second grade students. <coughs> we utilize the I Station reading and literacy assessments to provide us information that correlates strongly to the Texas essential knowledge and skills. Since students in grades K through 2 are not tested with the state assessment or STAR, we utilize iStation. All BISD students in grades K through 2 are assessed three times a year to determine their literacy progress. Our goal is to have 100% of our students reading on grade level by the end of the 2020 school year. Tonight's report will focus on our mid-year results and the growth our students have made since being assessed in September. This first table illustrates where our kindergarten students were performing at the beginning of the school year compared to that of the middle of the school year. The table displays how each elementary campus performed the percentage of student literacy growth they achieved in a three-month period. Seven of our nine elementary schools showed positive reading growth at the end of the first semester. 86% of our kindergarten students were performing on grade level, which is 4% higher than the beginning of the school year. This next table illustrates where our first grade students were performing since the beginning of the school year and how they scored in December. Overall, the district grew 2% for first grade and 5 of <coughs> nine campuses had positive literacy growth. Although we had hoped for improvement in literacy scores across all nine campuses, these results are not unusual as new and more complicated reading skills are being introduced at this grade level. In addition, I have to note that I reported in the board update last Friday that SFA had grown it had shown a decrease in growth when actually they improved 3% and the correction is noted here. Please accept my apologies. This table reflects how our second grade <coughs> students were performing since the beginning of the school year. As you can see, eight of our nine elementary campuses had positive growth, while one campus, Madge Griffith, remained constant. Overall, second grade literacy scores grew from 85% to 89%. The following graph focuses on grade level performance over the last three school years based on the middle of the year results. If you start from the left, you can see that our kindergarten scores over a three year period fluctuate from 88 to 86 percent. We move to the middle of the slide, you can see that our first grade grew considerably last year with 90 percent of the students on grade level and is currently holding steady with 88 percent of our students on grade level. Second grade has steadily increased over the last two years with 89% of our students reading on grade level, which is 14% higher than in 2017-18. This next graphic displays our students as they move from one grade level to the next over a three-year period, or what we call our cohort groups. In 2017-18, 88% of our kindergarten cohort group of students were on grade level, they rose to 90% as first graders in 2018-19 and are holding as second graders with 89% on grade level. The first grade cohort in the middle of the slide had 79% of their students reading on grade level in 2017-18. Last year's second graders, 85% were reading on grade level and now as third graders, 83% are reading on grade level. And finally, to the right of the slide are current fourth graders who started out in 2017-18 as second graders with 75% <coughs> of the class reading on grade level, increased to 82% as third graders, and is now at 86% of the class reading on grade level. That is an increase of 11% over three years. And this final slide provides a visual presentation of where our three grade levels are currently performing the growth measures they need to achieve to reach our 2020 literacy goal. Kindergarten is currently at 86% with 14% growth needed to meet their goal. First grade is at 88% with 12% needed to reach their end of the year goal. And second grade is at 89% just shy of their goal by 11%. With five months left of instruction, we know our campuses are working diligently to achieve these goals by the end of the year. This concludes this report on our kindergarten through second grade student literacy performance. I will now address any questions that you may have. <coughs> update on the 2014 and 2019 bond programs. Tonight's update 
will include both the 2014-2019 capital project along with the construction project. The 2014 bond program is 81.51% completed or in progress with POs issued totaling $142.6 million. The 2019 bond program is 11.38% completed in, or in progress with POs issued totaling $30.3 million. 2014 construction projects are Roberts and Brandon Elementary, both of which are in the construction phase and will be completed in August of 2020. The 2019 construction projects for Brazoswood High School have been divided into four phases. Phase one is the multi-sport field house. It is in the construction phase and will be completed in August of 2020. Phase two is the CTE building, which will go out to bid this week with a recommendation for the board to approve the guaranteed maximum price at the February board meeting and is anticipated to be completed by June of 2021. Phase three is the main campus, which is in design development. Board approval for a contract will be recommended in May, and the anticipated completion will be phased in through the fall of 2022. The final phase is the athletic improvements, which includes the baseball and softball fields, um, also improvements at the tennis court, and the conversion of the existing CTE vocational building into the district-wide technology building. This phase is still an early design development. Um, the projects um, in this phase will be completed in the fall and winter of 2022, <coughs> with all athletic improvements being ready by the 2023 season. The Stephen F. Austin STEM Academy is in design development phase. Board approval for a contract will be recommended in March, with the anticipated completion in July of 2021. Mr. Jernay will provide some more information, more details on each of these projects shortly. In addition to the construction projects, our bond programs also fund capital items. From the 2014 bond, technology has worked with Mr. Morrow to find a solution that is designed to intelligently enhance indoor cellular connectivity. This is being piloted here at the administration building with the intent to deploy to campuses throughout the district that have limited to no service in various locations throughout their buildings. Transportation is also in the process of purchasing two air jacks to replace current jacks that are past their useful life. The 2019 bond is a little busier, and we'll start with our, construct or our curriculum and instruction um, team. Stream labs were installed at Velasco, Griffith, and Aug this past summer. The bond also includes $2 million for library books and resources. Funds have been allocated to each campus campus and our media specialists are in the process of purchasing the first round of resources that will update their collection. The book bus design is well underway and is a project that we are all excited to bring to our students and to the communities of our district. We saw firsthand this past summer the desire our students had to get a good book and to sit down and read, especially during those summer months. As Child Nutrition strategically plans their stops at apartment complexes and other areas, the book bus will be there alongside of them. They'll provide access to reading materials and other library resources. Additionally, there will be a teacher <coughs> and or a librarian that will be on board the bus to guide our students towards instructional and fun activities that will prevent the summer learning slide. This project is not something that we just purchased. Michelle Griffith, our BISD lead media specialist, has developed a district-wide committee and has engaged students at all levels to contribute to this project. The committee toured other districts to see their buses and discuss their successes and what they would have done differently if they were to build it again. The bus has been provided by transportation. A district-wide contest was held and artwork from each campus has been turned over to Ms. Nova's Bwood Design students who are working on the final exterior design. Here are just a few of the creative submissions that we have received. BISD stands for Books Inspire Student Dreams. Reading is for everyone. This committee is eager to see how our BWIS design students incorporate these and or others into the final design. The middle picture on this slide um, was sent to us from Ms. Nova. These are a few of her kids working to create that final design. We have students from the Brazosport High School business class creating the logo and marketing plan for the bus. Students from the Brazoswood and Brazosport vocational classes, manufacturing and welding classes, are creating the interior of the bus 
and the bus will be actually used as their final project in the state competition <coughs> this April. The bus has been gutted, which you can see our students in, and will and will be sent for paint prep, um, hopefully within the next month. The wheels on the bus will begin to roll at this year's Read 2020 Free Read Jamboree. The scoreboard for both Brazosport and Brazoswood baseball and softball fields have been ordered. Here are, a few of the, or here are the renderings. Um, they should be installed at all sites by the 17th of January. The baseball scoreboards will have three slots for available for sponsors, and the softball scoreboards will have room for two. The baseball fencing at the exporter field is scheduled to be installed also on the 17th of January. The top picture was taken last week and you can see the existing fencing has been removed and the old scoreboard is still standing. Once the new fence is installed, the painting should be completed towards the end of this month, weather dependent. Uh, the Wilson Field fence requires a completely new structure and that project will be completed over this summer. Uh, the pole vault at Slave Field had to be relocated due to, due to the construction of the new field house. The project will be completed mid-February, um, probably February 21st is the is the date that we have, again, weather permitting. Um, other purchases have been made, um, our training room equipment, turf rolls for the Wilson and Ladybug batting cages, weight room equipment at Brazosport High School, sideline chairs for Brazoswood and Brazosport basketball. Um, pictured um, are the chairs that came in last week for Brazosport. Brazoswood will be delivered sometime this week. And lastly, uh, upgrades to the sound system at Wilson Field. Technology is working on the wireless infrastructure refresh update. We have received all the RFP responses and are working to tabulate those bids. Uh, we have, we will have a recommendation at the February board meeting. This project is eligible for E-rates, so we will file this bid award through the process to access those federal dollars to offset the cost um, of this project. The project will start in July of 2020 and we anticipate completion by May of 2021. Technology is also working on a camera server upgrade. The RFP for this project will be published in February and March will make a recommendation to the board and will start the project in May. The expected completion for this project is December of 2020. Technology continues to use bond funds to replace security cameras district-wide. Our police department has ordered one new vehicle which should be delivered next month. Our safety and security department completed a district-wide assessment on camera radios and we have ordered 120 additional radios. We are in the early stages of gathering information and will be performing extensive walkthroughs to determine all exterior doors that will receive access control. So we'll be adding additional keyless badge entries um, at all sites. The RFP for this project will be published in March and will, com be, will be completed by January of 2021. Tonight the board approved the contract to award 25 new buses to replace existing buses that are 15 plus years old. Five of these buses will be delivered within 45 days and the remaining are all, will be ordered and take three to four months for delivery. Uh, Mr. Craig, our Director of Transportation, spent a significant amount of time applying for two grants and has been awarded $1.2 million from the Texas VMP and $80,000 from HGAC um, Clean Vehicles Program. So these funds will be used to offset the amount of the contract that you approved tonight. And then lastly, 2019 bond dollars have been used by maintenance and operations to purchase various custodial equipment and replace a cold water pump at LJI that has failed. So at this time, I will turn it over to Mr. Jernay to provide an update on the 2014 and 19 construction project. Good evening. <coughs> the slides for Roberts and Brandon, we've combined into one, uh, to one uh, slide so we can give a comparison of the, the two projects. As you know, Robert started about three months earlier than Brandon, and uh, we raised the site up so high at Brandon, it took a little bit longer to start seeing activity with concrete and walls and things of that nature. So we're now at the stage where Brandon is really uh, catching up, where you start to see on a daily basis more things that are taking place over there. It's moving along very well, and during the Christmas break, they really made a substantial improvement in the amount of work that's being done. These, these slides, Roberts is on the left and Brandon's on the right, of course, and
and uh, just kind of gives you a perspective of the uh, two schools and the stages that they're in. Roberts has all of the uh, exterior brick in place, and Brandon has started their exterior brick. This is a view of the rear of the school. Um, again, they're, they're both moving along very well and as scheduled. Uh, this is a view of the uh, cafeteria and stage area and gymnasium area. Oops. And here is uh, from the overlook looking down into the media center. And this is showing the uh, typical classroom wing. They've started putting drywall in over at Roberts and will be very soon over at Ray. 2019 current projects are the, of course, the Brasswood Fieldhouse. Uh, which is in construction, the CTE building and design development along with the main campus and Stephen F. Austin Elementary. Uh, I have the uh, architect's renderings on, on each of these slides and uh, this, this is a aerial uh, photograph that was taken at, uh, for the field house last Wednesday. You can see in the uh, upper part of the photograph the uh, parking lot uh, that the work started on the addition to the existing parking lot which is designated for the athletic parking for the students. This is just showing some of the uh, utility work that is taking place. We should see a foundation going in very soon over there, probably within uh, weather cooperating within the next two weeks. You can see slate field in the background. <coughs> uh, Brazos with CTE, as Rebecca said, uh, we've got it planned and it's ready to going out to bed and we'll be coming to you very soon so we can start construction on that. Uh, this is just a, uh, a rendering of the interior of the building. I would like to add that no decisions have been made on the graphics or anything like that. These are just architects uh, renderings kind of showing you where graphics would be and things of that nature. This is the exterior of Brazoswood High School. This is showing the main entrance and then over in the far <coughs> left is the media center. Again, this is another interior view showing the graphics, and this is at the learning stair going up to the second floor to the media center. This is Stephen F. Austin STEM Academy, which will be coming to you very soon, and we'll start construction uh, in March on that project. And uh, this is an interior view from the media center looking up to the stairs in the background that go up to the fifth and sixth grade wing and then looking up towards the over, uh, overlook uh, learning area in the upper right hand corner. This is in the same area that was in the upper right hand corner looking down into the media center from the second floor. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Next time we have any reports, the report see any board committee reports from our board members. Yeah, the CBOC meeting in December, uh, I think it was really good because it presented the overview like we saw from the architects for the graduates for that meeting. I think it was, I think it was a good timing. I think they enjoyed it. So, that's a good job. livestock show art that came to the center. It was fabulous. The most fabulous art. I couldn't believe that students, I mean, some of them like the second grader, I'm like, what? I mean, it was, it was excellent, y'all. And there was a lot of, the judges awarded a lot of the purple ribbons, you know, to send them up. And it was very, very professional, very well done. The teachers were so fun to, you know, to meet and get to work with. And they did an excellent job and the students did a beautiful job. Let y'all know from all the different schools, the kids are just super talented. So it was, it was fun to see. <coughs> One other thing, with Mr. Massey's permission, uh, a school district in Neosho, Missouri, is using our Citizen Fund Oversight Committee format. They're having trouble with some uh, passing some bonds, and they needed. I was there Christmas visiting, and uh, they were first excited the fact that one of their local alumni, Mr. Massey, being from Missouri Southern State University, which is about 20 miles from this little town in the Osho, um, 
that he was successful enough to be a superintendent. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, they were very pleased because they've had two or three bonds get defeated. And uh, so we, we sent it to them, and they seem to be excited. So that's a plus for our school district, Mr. Massey and his leadership. Yeah, the BISD scholars, uh, Brian and his crew, you know, I had, there were teachers, there was uh, parents that, you know, they just exclaimed over that. So it was, it was very successful, very well done. Oh yeah, that was, good. it was neat that the teachers were there when it was dragging through the group. They would call out teachers, which, is that, did they do that last year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Any other reports? All right. So next item uh, then is our next work uh, session discussion. Our next uh, regular scheduled board meeting will be February the 17th. And now we have the executive session. The executive session may be called for the purposes committed by the Texans of the Meeting Act, Texas Government Code Section 551.001 to 551.046, Sections 551.071, Consultation with Attorneys, Section 551.074. Personnel matters, appointment, employment, evaluation, assignment, dismissal, and dismissal, complaint. We'll be back. Record, it is 654. Dang. With the Be sure to watch the little video day. Send us on email. Okay. Oh, the school? Yeah. 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 Thank you.